All right, the title of the sermon this morning is Attributes of a Lazy Person. Attributes of a Lazy Person. So normally, you know, sermons are you know, encouraging you to do certain things. This sermon is going to be the opposite. This is going to be uh, what you should, encouraging what you shouldn't do. Uh, so we're going to look at nine attributes of a lazy person. And, you know, we should be like King Solomon here in Proverbs 24, when he goes past the field of the slothful, he says, he, he says, I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. See, so you can learn from good examples, but you can also learn from bad examples. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be the bad example to know that it's a bad example. You can, he can take instruction from the situation of somebody else. So today we're going to be talking about laziness, you know, the sin of laziness. The word laziness is not really found in the Bible. The Bible uses the word slothful. It describes the slothful person as a sluggard, right? You think about it, the way a slug moves, just like drags itself over the ground. That, that's the sort of, uh, you know, uh, imagery that you get of this slothful sluggard. So we're going to look at attributes of a lazy person this morning. And all of these are in Proverbs. The Proverbs has a lot to talk about in terms of working diligently and being lazy. So we don't want to be lazy as people of God. We want to work hard. But, you know, there are certain things as well that are attributed to the slothful slugger, to the lazy person, that I think we should try and avoid too. So number one, number one attribute, uh, and these are not ranked in any particular order, so it's not that this is the highest ranked attribute. But one attribute of a lazy person is that they are full of excuses. They are full of excuses. Proverbs 26, look at this. Seest thou a wise man, seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. So what is it saying? What somebody that's wise in his own conceit? That means they're wise in their own eyes. They think of themselves more highly than they are. And it says here, there is more hope of a fool than of him. And you'll notice later on in this passage that the man wise in his own conceit is talking about the slothful man, right? Because it says later that the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. So why is there more hope of a fool than of the sluggard? Because to, in my mind, what I think here is at least the fool is doing something. He may be doing something silly, but at least he's going to learn from his mistakes. He's going to learn from experience. But the sluggard, the slothful, the lazy person is so busy making excuses for why they don't need to do it that they never learn from experience. And that's why there's more hope that the fool will be successful in what they do because at least they learn by experience than the lazy person that's just always making excuses for why they don't do things. Look at the excuse that they have here. Verse 13, the slothful man say it. There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. And we sometimes joke about this excuse of the slothful man making up reasons why they can't do everything so hard. They say, I can't go out into the streets because a lion's going to attack me. Right? So they're just extreme and elaborate excuses for why they can't do something. And this is an attribute of a lazy person. So there's always an excuse, even if it's made up. You know, maybe there's a small chance that a lion might uh, attack them, but then maybe they're just making up excuses why not to do things, right? But there's always an excuse, full of excuses for the lazy person. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. And we'll see that as a recurring theme as well for the lazy person. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. So what is that referring to in verse 15? The slothful is that they're stubborn, right? This is what I think of when you hide your hand in your bosom. It's like they're just they're making up all these reasons, all these excuses why they can't do something. And it's so difficult that they don't even want to do the bare necessities. It says it grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. They don't even want to do the smallest necessity thing, necessary thing to even bring their mouth, their hand to their mouth to feed themselves. That's the imagery that it's giving here. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. What's saying here? In his mind, 
He's smarter than everyone, right, in terms of the justification. So they will, what I find, you know, the lazy person here, they will expend more effort justifying why they won't do something rather than just doing it. You know, the effort in trying to, you know, justify and come up reasons with why they don't do it as opposed to just doing it. It would probably make their life easier. So don't be like this. Don't be like the lazy person, full of excuses. Instead of having excuses not to do something, think of reasons to do it. See, I think of this with soul winning. You know, soul winning is a good example, you know, where Christians are lazy when it comes to soul winning. And, you know, it's like in verse 13, there's a lion in the way. You know, when people want to do something that's a little uncomfortable, they always say, well, what if somebody, uh, you know, is mean to me? What if somebody does this? What if somebody does that? But then when you go out, so when you realize 99% of the people are not like that. So it's the same with this excuse of like, hey, there's a lion in the way. There's something bad's going to happen. And you, you come up with excuses why not to go. But instead of coming up with excuses not to go, come up with reasons to go. That's why it's so important, you know, you know, people need to hear the gospel. People are going to hell, you know, I need to obey the Lord. You have reasons to go rather than excuses not to go. So we see here that their sluggard is unwilling to do even the smallest task, put, put, bring their hand to their mouth to feed themselves. Um, and they're not even willing to do those necessary things. Let's go on to the second one. So the first one is, the first one is they're full of excuses. You don't want to be full of excuses. You know, come up with reasons to do things rather than excuses not to do things. Number two, the lazy person stays in their comfort zone. Stays in their comfort zone. Proverbs 20 verse 4. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. What is that? It's too cold outside. It's too uncomfortable. Everything for the sluggard is too hard. They, oh, you know, oh, but I have to get up too early. You know, it's too complex. It takes too long. They're always complaining about being uncomfortable. And we don't want to be like that, right? We want to be a bit more tough. We want to endure hardness, like the Bible says, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We don't want to just complain about things being too hard, too cold, too hot, too windy, too long. You know, that's what the lazy person does, right? They stay in their comfort zone. What about when it comes to learning new things? You know, sometimes when I worked in the workplace, you know, the, the, the company would want to implement something different, implement a new system, change the way people work. But... The lazy person doesn't want to learn new things. They resist change. They don't want to go along and help make things better. You don't want to be like that. You, know, you want to be able to get out of your comfort zone. Like Peter stepped out of the boat, got out of his comfort zone, did great things for God. You don't want to be the lazy person that just always stays in their comfort zone. Proverbs 15, 19. Look at this. The way of the slothful man is as a hedge of thoughts, but the way of the righteous is made plain. What is this proverb referring to? I think what this is referring to is the irony of actually being lazy actually makes your life harder. So, so the irony of being a lazy person is that if you're lazy and you're not diligent and you don't take care of things, your life is actually harder than if you, if you were diligent. So what the lazy person is trying to avoid, which is work and diligence, it is actually, if they are lazy, it actually is harder for them. That's why it's saying here, the way of the slothful man is as a hedge of thoughts. So whilst the slothful man is trying to live the easy life and cut corners and not be diligent, the way that they tread is actually hard. There's all thorns along the way. But the way of the righteous is made plain. See, so when somebody's righteous, they're diligent. They're organized. They're not lazy. Their life is actually a lot easier, right? So this is, this is, this is funny. This is the irony of, uh, you know, being a lazy person, right? So if you want to actually... So one thing I learned you know, is if you actually want your life to be easier is, is not to be lazy. Be diligent, and then things are actually easier than being lazy. So number two, they stay in their comfort zone. They're not willing to do things that are hard. Number three, 
Number three, we saw this one in the first point where the, you know, the slothful turns on his bed like a door on a hinge. Right? Number three is the lazy person sleeps too much. The lazy person sleeps too much. Now, we all need sleep, but the lazy person sleeps too much. Right? Look what it says here in Proverbs 19.15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. So, you know, as we go through these different attributes of a lazy person, now I want you to reflect on them and think, you know, you may not, you know, consider yourself a lazy person, but maybe you've got attributes of a lazy person. You can reflect on them and think, you know what, that describes me a bit, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking about these as well as I preach these, you know, so it's a good exhortation, a good encouragement, a good rebuke for all of us. And it's like, hey, is this an attribute I have? Hey, I've got to do something about it. This is something that God doesn't want me to be. Proverbs 19.15, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. This is another one of these ironic things about being lazy, about being slothful, that the more you sleep, the more tired you feel. You know, yes, we all need like a minimum amount of sleep to operate, but there is too much sleep. Like the Bible says here, when you're slothful, it actually makes you more tired. It's like people that don't exercise have less energy. You would think it's the opposite. You would think, well, if I exercise, I'm using up my energy. But it's actually different because if you actually work hard, you exercise, you're not slothful, you'll actually have more energy than if you are slothful. Why? Because slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. So if you don't go out and work, and it's like the Bible says, you know, shall not work, neither should he eat. So excessive sleep actually makes you more tired. I'm thinking about this one myself because, you know, it's like, it's like when you get up in the morning and you, and you snooze. And you know how they say, and I've seen so many videos about this, but, you know, they say snoozing actually affects how you feel after you wake up. Like if you just get up the first time you wake up, you actually have a lot more energy than if you snooze. But, you know, that's a, that's a bad habit of mine too, that I've got to get, I've got to like stop snoozing. I've got to wake up, just get out of bed. I know when I do that, even if I have less sleep, I actually feel a lot better. Um, so, you know, everyone's seen the, the, the joke on, you know, when you look at your phone. I don't know if Android's the same, but, you know, iPhone, you can set, like, multiple alarms. And, like, people just have, like, you know, 10, 15 alarms because they're, they're already planning the night before. They're going to snooze. See, I have that bad habit, too. Like, I, I said a few times, just in case I miss the first one. But for me, it's more, you know, okay, if I don't get up the first one and I accidentally fall asleep again, I get a few alarms waking me up. But you don't want to plan to snooze because if you snooze, and you keep sleeping in, you know, there's actually something scientific about it. I don't know all the science about it. But supposedly, you know, if you sleep in, if you've woken up and your body starts going into sleep again, but you don't actually get a proper sleep, you actually feel more groggy. You actually be, be more tired than if you just woke up, even if you had less sleep. So the lazier you are, the less energy you have. And actually working hard, exercising, you know, getting your body moving actually gives you more energy. Proverbs 20, verse 13, look what the Bible says here. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Love not sleep. Isn't that interesting? That's like, you know, the Bible's telling us here, don't love sleep. So we say, oh man, I just love my sleep so much. I mean, you must be sinning, right? Because the Bible says, don't love sleep. If you love sleep, then, you know, that's not the right thing to do. You need to be awake, be willing to work, want to work. You know, see sleep as a necessity, not something that you love, right? And that you, that you uh, just do too much of. And think about this. You know, they say the average time you should sleep is eight hours a day. Now, how many hours of the day are there? You know, there's, there's 24 hours in the day. So they say if on average you sleep eight hours in the day, that is one third of your life. So let's say you live 99 years or 90 years old. 30, 30 of those years you spend with your eyes closed sleeping if you sleep eight hours a day. Isn't that a crazy thought that one third of your life is gone just to sleep. So how much more of your life do you want to give to sleep? 
And this is why. Just sleep enough that you need to, but then get up and go to work and do some work. Proverbs 20, 13. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. So the lazy person sleeps too much. You already sleep away a third of your life, eight hours per day. How much more do you want to give to it? I don't think. I think eight hours is, is certainly enough. Number four, number four, an attribute of a lazy person is they are a pain to work with. They are a pain to work with. Look at what it says here in Proverbs 10, 26. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to them that send him. You know, I think about this, you know, with the sluggard. You know, it, the sluggard is not like an unreliable person that just doesn't show up. I feel like the sluggard, they show up, but then they show up and they just make life so difficult. They show up, they drag their feet, they complain about things, you know, they move slow. This is why the Bible says here, as vinegar to the teeth. Think about that analogy of vinegar to the teeth. It's not like somebody just punching your teeth out. Vinegar is like a slow deterioration, just wearing away your teeth. It's like, you know, when children drink too much juice and things like that and they don't uh, brush their teeth, just slowly wears away. Somebody, you guys smell that? Does that smell? Is that coming from that? Oh, it's coming from the kitchen. All right. Okay, sure. I, I thought it was coming from the air conditioning. I thought it was uh, pulling something inside. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eye. So you think about this vinegar to the teeth. It's like a slow wearing away of your teeth. That's what the sluggard person makes people feel like. You know, it's like they say in business, it's death by a thousand paper cuts. Just like small things, but everything is so small, dragging their feet. Smoke to the eyes. You know, when you, you, know, you do a campfire, it's not like it's just a fire that just takes you out. It's just a small thing, ah, oh, just stinging. It's just like you can't get away. You know, you try and move around the fire. You can't, can't get away from it. That is what the sluggard is like to them that send him, to them that have to work with him, to them that have to ask him to do a task. You don't want to, have, you don't want to be like that sluggard. You want to make things harder for the boss. You don't want to make things harder for your colleagues. Just think about when you work with somebody lazy, how frustrating it is when they are like vinegar to your teeth and smoke to your eyes. So you don't want to be like that as a child of God. Right? So they're a pain to work with. So if you're always doing the minimum at work, you know, making excuses at work, you know, don't be surprised you know, if you're the last in line from promotion. You know, maybe other people aren't that excited to work with you. And maybe the boss doesn't want to give you a positive reference when you move on to somebody else, somewhere else. So you don't want to be lazy at work and make it difficult, be somebody hard to work with. All right? Number five. Number five. This is going back to the proverb that we read this morning uh, before that Gershon read, Proverbs 24. The lazy person neglects their spaces. Neglects their spaces. I was trying to think of a word because, like, neglects their home, but also neglects their workplace. Just the, the spaces that they operate in are being neglected. This is what we see here in Proverbs 24. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man, void of understanding. So you see here that the lazy person is likened to somebody that is void of understanding. Why? Because it's just, just like the Bible talks about diligence being easy, diligence being good, you know, being lazy has all these problems. They don't realize, they don't comprehend these things. So in lazy, being lazy, they're making their life harder for themselves, but they think they're making their life easier. I went by the field of the slothful. So this is Solomon as he's walking through the kingdom. He goes by a field. He sees here, this is the field of the lazy person. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, look at this, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. So you can see here that the lazy person has neglected their spaces. You can see here, whether it's their home here or whether it's their workspace, they are not maintaining it. They've allowed the weeds and the thorns just to grow, right? The mess to continue to pile up. And the stone wall of thereof was broken down, not doing basic maintenance. And the thing here is that 
The, the, the space that they operate in, you see here, it's got thorns, it's got nettles, and the wall is falling over. So you can see here that when a space is being neglected, it actually starts getting dangerous. It's like when you see people, you know, when you go out soul winning and it's like, you know, the, the, you open the door and it's like smelly inside, people aren't throwing out rubbish. You know, what happens? Like rats start coming, mold starts growing, you know, they're not looking after their garden, you know, the, the thorns and the nettles are all growing over. So one thing, one thing that makes me think here is that the environment that they operate in is actually starting to get dangerous. I mean, what if the stone wall fell on them? Right? Or, what, you know, the, the nettles, you know, what if they're poisonous and things like that? Because, you know, when they're small and they haven't grown yet, now they've grown up, you know, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a danger there. And I think of that with mess as well. Like when you know, things get moldy and things get grown, and then people start getting sick because of uh, the sort of environment that they operate in. But not only that, you see, when you neglect your space, it actually now becomes harder to clean it up. You know, I liken it to like dishes, you know, if you just like rinse the dish immediately, it, then it, it's a lot easier to clean. But you know, when you leave dishes in the sink and then it's all baked on, it all dries out, you have to actually spend more time to clean it up later. So this is why the, the slothful person, the lazy person is void of understanding because if they just did the small things consistently, their life would be so much easier as opposed to letting it all grow over, letting it all get messy, letting it get all neglected and you know, now it's worse and now it's even harder to clean up, right? So we were walking, um, I remember we, we, when uh, I, I was taking some photos for Joshua and Kristen after they got married. And we were walking through the fields just out at Hoxton Park. And there's these fields and there's just all these huge thorny bushes. And I just remember asking uh, Josh, you know, like, man, like this, this is just completely just overgrown. And he said to me, because these, these thorny bushes are so hard to remove because you can't even like, he said, bring a tractor in there because it's very, it's very difficult. So it reminds me of this. It reminds me of the South Vineyard. Because it's like gets to the point where you, you can't do anything about it. Maybe you've got to burn it down. <laughs> you've got to get rid of it. But this is what happens when it, it's neglected, right? When they neglect their spaces. They're not willing to do the maintenance work. They didn't have the foresight to do the task when it was easier. And now the space has become dangerous. It's become unhealthy, right? Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. See, so will you look at the sluggard, the attributes of the lazy person, and learn from it? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy wants as an armed man. You see how these things don't happen overnight. Neglect does not happen overnight. It's a slow neglect, little sleep, little slumber, little folding of the hands to sleep. What's this? I'll do it later. I'll do it later. Yeah, I'll do it later. Yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. And then eventually, you know, whether it's sleep or whether it's entertainment or, you know, spending too much on time on social media, making excuses, procrastinating, you know, maybe you're just, you know, risk aversion, blaming others, blaming circumstances, slowly but surely, you start to neglect those spaces, right? Ecclesiastes 10.18, by much slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness on the hands, the house droppeth through. See, so sometimes it's not just, you know, you actively destroying a space. It's just the lack of maintenance, the lack of work there, the lack of organization. This, the workspace is slowly, you know, becoming neglected. All right, so neglects their spaces. What's number six? Number six is the lazy person is covetous and envious. Covetous and envious. Proverbs 13, 4, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So yeah, of course, if somebody works hard, they're diligent, they're going to have more, and they're going to have some to spare as well. It's going to be made fat. But the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. Proverbs 21, 25, the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. So that same thought that the sluggard wants, right, but he's not willing to work for it, you know, and they, they get this 
this entitlement mentality like you have today, right? And they look like the sluggard, the lazy person looks at the successful person and says, oh, you know, it must be nice having all that money. But then they neither, like, like the Bible says, they're void of understanding. They don't realize the sacrifice and the work that it took to get there. You know, the, the successful person is not sitting around watching movies all day, playing games all day, sleeping all day. No, they're out there working. And, and you know, you see them successful because they, they put the work in. They were diligent, right? They didn't have this entitlement mentality. A lot of lazy people these days, when you think about welfare, you think about what they expect from the government, they just think, oh yeah, the government should provide me this. The government should provide me that. And this is this entitlement mentality, right? Now the Bible says in Proverbs 12, 24, um, I didn't put it in my, in my notes, but I do want to, want to read it to you because it's a um, great verse. I just forgot to copy it in. Proverbs... 12.24, and it ties into this whole idea of this entitlement mentality. It says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. What does that mean? If you're diligent and you work hard, they tend to be the people that are in charge, right? If you're a lazy person, you say, oh, it must, must be nice to be the boss. Well, if you're a lazy person, you'll never be the boss, right? You need to work hard. You need to be diligent. The Bible says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. But look, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Now, does that not describe the entitlement mentality of people that just want everything paid for from the government, provided for by the government, and say, oh, the government should pay me this, give me that, give me a house to live, give me a job, give me a basic universal income. And then they wonder why they are oppressed by their government. They wonder why they, they, they now have no choice to live how they want. Well, it's because if the government's providing you with everything, well, then you're going to be under tribute. They're going to take away your freedom of choice because, you know, now that they provide for you like your children, you provide for them, you need to take care of them, you need to deal with their consequences, you restrict their freedom. So you see, with freedom comes responsibility. And if you're not going to be responsible and provide for yourself, then you lose the freedom as well. That's why the slothful... Uh, under tribute. All right, so lazy people are rarely put in charge of things, and therefore they are not as successful. And the slothful want handouts, so that's why they will always be taxed into oppression. All right, next attribute of a lazy person. Attribute of a lazy person, wasteful and inefficient. They're wasteful and inefficient. Proverbs 18, he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Now, why when you're lazy, you waste a lot? Because a lot of things get thrown out. You know, like you don't want to have to clean and wash things and reuse things to save money, so you start using just all disposable things, you know? You know? But also, saving money takes diligence, doesn't it? Right? So, First of all, you've got to you know, not spend the money, but then you need to be organized. So, for example, like, you know, like I'm, I'm organizing some events. You know, even businesses require organization. If you are not organized, then you're always doing things last minute. And when things are last minute, they're always more expensive, right? I ran out of this, I got to get it from the 7-Eleven. I ran out of toilet paper, I got to get it from the petrol station that's open. And it's always like twice as much, you know? Oh, I didn't book my flights, I'm traveling somewhere. Why? They're always more expensive as you get closer to the day. So you see how it requires diligence for things to be cost less. If you're going to buy in bulk, you need to be more organized. Whereas when you don't buy in bulk, if you're just buying things, you know, every day, then, you know, you're not organized, you're basically throwing money away. So saving money takes diligence. And, you know, saving $1 is not the same as, like, making $1.50 because you've got taxes, right? You've got to put in effort to make more money. So whenever you save a dollar, you're actually making way more than just trying to make more money. So anyone can spend more money on things rushed and last minute. And this is why the slothful person is a brother to him that is a great waster. Not only does it require diligence to keep things organized and be on top of things, but you need to plan ahead, right? So if you don't plan ahead, then things aren't cheaper. You can't buy in bulk. You can't you know, buy things while they're cheap. 
So it's the same with organizing events, you know, flights, accommodation, but even just managing your own household as well. Proverbs 12, 27. What the Bible says here, the slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. What do you think this is talking about? I, I, I think what this is talking about, because I was studying it up and, and reading some commentaries on it as well, it says here that the slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting. So if you can think about it right, the slothful man may catch something, but then they don't, they, they're not able to keep it to the point where eventually they'll eat it, right? So either they don't prepare it, or they can't even keep that animal from escaping, right? Whereas the substance of the diligent man is precious. So when I think of this proverb where it says, the slothful man catches something, they obtain something, but they can't keep it. And then they don't enjoy the fruit of their labor. Whereas the diligent man realizes the, the work it took to obtain something, and they know it requires maintenance, and then they get to actually enjoy the thing that they obtain. The Bible has this phrase that says that you put money in a bag full of holes. So this is what I think when I think of the slothful man, is that they, they may expend the energy to obtain something, but because they don't, they're not diligent and they don't expend the energy maintaining something, they're, they're losing the things that they have. But the diligent man doesn't. This is why I'm saying that the slothful man is wasteful. They don't even realize that they're expending more energy to do something than they need to because they have to repeat and to do things again. They're not maintaining it. And also, they're inefficient because they, instead of just doing the task once, as in catching the animal, maintaining it and eating it, they need to catch it again. Because now when they want to eat, they have to do the job the second time. And again, it's a man void of understanding. Why? Because the job is so much harder. Because if you just did it right the first time, it would have been easy if you were diligent. Number eight, two more. So, wasteful and inefficient. Eighth attribute of a lazy person is they have no initiative and planning. No initiative and planning. Let's go to Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6, it says here, Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. So, you have the sluggard, who is the animal, you know, like a slug for the lazy person. And what is the animal for a diligent person? It's the ant. You see that the ant doesn't complain. The ant, you know, understands its part in the grand scheme of the colony, right? The ant works hard. I mean, the ant can carry things multiple sides its way. The ant will work together with other ants to bring, you know, accomplish great things. You see, like, the ant colony and how they've all digged it out. There's, you know, when, when all the ants work together, look at what they accomplish. And, you know, the church of God should be like, like that as they all work together, they all play their part in the body of Christ and do great things like the ant. And, and Solomon is saying here, go look to the ant, the lazy person, and think about how the ant is and be wise. So just like he walked past the field of the sluggard, right, and learned something, now he's going to the ant to learn something which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. You see there, it doesn't require supervision. You know, that's what I mean by the sluggard doesn't take initiative, doesn't do things without being told, right? You don't want to be like that. You want to be like the ant that doesn't require constant supervision, somebody telling you what to do, somebody prompting you what to do all the time. Be the ant, no guide, right? Where to go? No overseer, making sure that you're doing things right. Or ruler, right? You're self-governing, right? You govern yourself. You hold yourself to an account, right? That's the diligent person. They hold themselves to a standard and say, no, I don't do it that way because my standards are higher. They don't need somebody imposing their standard on them. Verse 8, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. You see how there's some forward thinking there. There's some planning, there's some looking, they're not just thinking about today, the next day, what's in front of their face. They plan ahead and know that things are coming, right? That's what the ant does. Provideth her meat in the summer, gathereth her food in the harvest. Why? So that they don't starve in winter. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? You see that same theme there, that the sluggard, the lazy person, sleeps too much. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, 
so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and they want as an armed man. So again, that gradual decline. So I think it's interesting that Proverbs 6 and Proverbs 24 ends with the same lesson, right? That this slow degrade is what causes this poverty and this want. And you can either learn from the slothful, right? Or you can learn from the ant. There's the two lessons there. So, the lazy person needs constant supervision. But, you know, us as Christians should not. We should be working as though we're serving the Lord. Colossians 3.22, Servants, obey all things. Obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Now, this verse is telling us, you know, you should work like you serve the Lord. But it's unfortunate because if I said that to some Christians, then they, they wouldn't be working at all. <laughs> so the way, see, the, the assumption here is that we love God enough that we serve God with passion and with zeal, and then we take that same hardworking, diligent, passion, zealous work ethic into the workplace. But unfortunately, it's the other way around, isn't it? Unfortunately, Christians put more effort into their work, more effort into their career, more effort into their passions and their worldly goals than they do into the work of God. So if I said to you, why don't you just serve God the way you work? Then maybe you would serve God to a higher degree. But isn't that a sad thing? That's a sad thing because that's not what the Bible says. The Bible's not saying that you should serve God like you serve work. The Bible says it the other way around, that you should work like you serve God. So reflect on that and think, what should be the thing I'm more diligent in? Am I more diligent in my worldly goals, in my, in, my, in my secular goals, or am I more passionate about the things of God? should be that way around, not the other way around. All right, let's talk about the last attribute. Last attribute of a lazy person is that they don't serve the Lord. So this all ties in. They don't they, 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 he doesn't, the lazy person doesn't serve the Lord. Hebrews 6, Hebrews 6, 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. He's saying to the, the Hebrews that he's writing to here that it's great that you guys are laboring. You see, you minister, you're doing the work of God, and God's not going to forget what you've done for him. Verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Right? So he's saying, God's not going to forget your labor of love. And, you know, we want everyone to be diligent about the things of God like you have been. Verse 12, that you be not, look at this word again, slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So you see, you are being lazy if you don't serve the Lord, if you don't have a ministry for God, if you're not doing things for God. That is spiritual laziness. Romans 12, 11 says, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So you don't want to be slothful in the spiritual work. See, you may be working hard in your physical life, but you also work hard for the Lord. Are you slothful in spiritual things? You say, oh, I'm working so hard, I don't have time to serve the Lord. Well, it's, that's correct. You know, you're doing so much of what you want to do that you're not doing what God commands you to do. I mean, how is that any different to like the sluggard that says, well, I don't have time to work because I'm watching movies and playing games all day. Yeah, they're doing what they want to do and they're not doing what God has commanded them to do. And in the same way, we may get busy doing something that may be thought of highly in this world but are you spending too much time doing the things that you want to do with your life and not doing the things that God wants you to do with your life? Slothful in business. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit 
the promises. So the lazy person doesn't serve the Lord, right? Being diligent requires you to be organized enough that you have the spare time, which means making the most of your other time so that you have time to serve the Lord, right? So that we have time to do things for God, right? How many times do people skip church because they're doing something on a Sunday that they should have done on another day? Finishing assignments, going to the shops, doing this or doing that, doing whatever other thing. You have six days in the week, right, that you could do things, but then you choose to do it on the day where you come, where you should be coming to church, hearing God's word and worshiping the Lord. So get things done during the week so Sunday is free for the Lord, right? Not slothful in business. Look at this fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So we don't want to be lazy in our pillars, right? We talked about 12, you know, 12 pillars like Bible, godliness, church, prayer, fasting, singing, giving, soul winning, impacting society, teaching others. All right? So in conclusion, let's be like Solomon as he walks past the field of the sloth. Let's consider it. Let's be wise. Let's learn from it. So the attributes of a lazy person. Number one, full of excuses. Number two, they stay in their comfort zone. Number three, they sleep too much. Number four, they're a pain to work with. Number five, they neglect their spaces. Number six, they're covetous and envious. Right? They want what others have, and they're not willing to work for it. Number seven, wasteful and inefficient. Right? Wasting what God has for them, wasting even the things that they work hard to earn themselves. Number eight, no initiative and planning. And number nine, they don't serve the Lord. So let's try and stay as far away from these attributes of a lazy person as possible. Let's be diligent, you know, zealous, fervent in spirit, like the Bible says, serving the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, help us to be diligent, help us to be hard work, help us to be like the ant, help us not to be like the slothful. And uh, Lord, it's, it's not easy, you know, all of us, including myself, Lord, we struggle in these areas, struggle with the flesh to, to want life to be easy. But Lord, help us to uh, not be like the slothful, help us to be like the ant, help us to work hard for you. Lord, not for ourselves only, but for you. So we thank you for uh, your word. Thank you for the reminder this morning. Uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name.